So yeah. In general. So my question is, what's what's the limit to not over extend nor too limiting? Well, that comes in from the other sciences. That's not the role of the mufassir. That's not the function of somebody of tafsir. The application of the laws ha- is the function of the people of fiqh and usul al fiqh. So this methodology. The methodology of fiqh. So the fuqaha will tell you what the limits of the application of the surah is in terms of law. The, us- the scholars of usul are the ones who are going to tell you the general methodology of deducing that law. That's not the function of the mufassir. And if a mufassir tells you about the legal implications of an ayah, you ignore him 100%. You ignore the mufassir. He's not to be listened to. Same thing with the muhaddith. If a muhaddith who's an expert in hadith, if an expert in hadith tells you about the fiqh of an ayah, uh, of a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, and he's not quoting the fuqaha, then you ignore what he has to say. Is it, and this is mentioned by the ulama. Al-Imam al-Zarkashi, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the great... Uh, polymathic scholars of the religion wrote a book in Usul al-Fiqh it's called Al-Bahr al-Muhid fi Usul al-Fiqh it's a huge work that he said I wrote this after I studied a hundred books of Usul in that he explicitly mentions if a muhaddith or a mufassir tells you about the fiqh of an ayah or a hadith and you ignore them if they're not quoting the fuqaha because it's not their field so yeah so the, the, the if you want to know how do I what is the limits of the application? You, you close the books of tafsir and you go to the books of fiqh. What do they say about this ruling? And then that's what you implement. <laughs>